بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, good morning everybody uh, today uh, we have a new lecture in our series of neurological emergencies uh, we will talk about the fight this is a usual fight in the ER uh, when you face a patient with disturbed conscious level to understand disturbed conscious level we have to understand the anatomy of consciousness simply the anatomy of consciousness needs an intact brain stem where is the reticular activating system is clear and a good functioning cerebral cortex so to have disturbed conscious level you have to have either brain stem lesion even if a small one as this or a very large a very large cerebral lesion to cause Disturbed conscious level like this. So, uh, when we see a patient with a stroke, small stroke that affects the basal ganglia or the internal capsule or, 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 and he is disturbed, it is usually not due to the stroke or the ischemic event or the even hemorrhagic event. We have to search for another cause. To have disturbed conscious level, you have either brain stem lesion or a very large cerebral lesion that could explain the disturbed conscious level. Okay, regarding causes of disturbed conscious level, it, is, uh, it varies very much. Too much causes for disturbed conscious level, especially when the patient is old age. We have neurological causes as stroke, cerebral hypoxia, cerebral hemorrhage, seizure, trauma, traumatic brain injury, tumor, vasculitis or encephalitis. We have metabolic causes as electrolyte disturbance, uremia, hepatic encephalopathy, hypoglycemia, increased CO2, vitamin deficiency as thiamine, vitamin B1, and thyroid disease. Also, we have toxic causes, medication-related, alcohol, recreational drugs, or toxic ingestion. Also, infections as UTI, pneumonia, sepsis, CNS infection, and abscess. We have also other causes that, is, that can be seen but not that much as insomnia, hypertension, and breasts uh, when you have a hypertensive encephalopathy, pain, and constipation. Pain and constipation usually more in old age. So uh, when we have a patient with disturbed conscious level, we have to be systematic just to reach the proper diagnosis. To be systematic, we have to start with history and examination. In history, we have to focus on onset of disturbed conscious level, either sudden or more subacute, or the patient is dementia and he has chronic disorientation. Also, if the disturbed conscious level is witnessed, some patients go with seizures, then become disturbed. When this is witnessed, it can explain the condition. Any preceding symptoms, or precipitating factors. Also, we have to uh, know the previous level of functioning. Was the patient good functioning, or he is bedridden and demented, and so and so. Also, comorbid conditions should be focused on, as diabetes, hypertension, COPD, renal, hepatic, is the patient epileptic, previous head injury, intake of any medications or toxins, any previous episodes of disturbed conscious level. Some patients come with recurrent attacks of disturbed conscious level, could be related to TIA or could be related to seizures or any other cause. In examination, we have to focus on vital signs. We have to secure airway, breathing, and circulation. Is there any signs of lateralization or other focal neurological deficits? Is there meningeal irritation signs or not? Has the patient got any uh, abnormal involuntary movements if the rhythmic could be seizure or if the dysrhythmic could be a uh, part of toxic metabolic cause, agita what we call agitated delirium state. We have to do fundoscopy to see if the patient has signs of increased intracranial tension, babel edema or not, and we have for sure to know the uh, coma grade uh, using the uh, appropriate uh, scale. To grade coma, we have either objective scales or subjective scales. Subjective scales just like this, when the patient is alert, he will appear 
uh, wake, wakeful and aware of self and the environment. And then if the coma is mild, moderate, or uh, severe, it could present with uh, either lethargy, the patient has reduced alertness, optimization, moderate reduction in alertness, increased response time to stimuli, or the patient could be stuporous when he is in deep sleep and needs vigorous stimulation to be waking up, or the patient could be totally unresponsive, which we call then coma, when he is in a sleep-like state and unresponsive to external stimuli. We could have also objective scales for coma assessment as Glasgow Coma Scale. It is very widely used, but it is usually not representative of the patient condition because it was initially developed uh, as a scale for uh, coma in traumatic patients. Then all, all people of medicine and surgery uses it in different situations. It is usually not representative to our patient. The more representative scale is really the four scale. It is more detailed. It has section for brainstem reflexes and for respiration. It represents more the uh, real uh, state or real grade of coma. We have to search for, usually, this is the neurological part of the lecture, we have to search for red flags. If we to call neurology for a patient with disturbed conscious living. You usually call neurology when you find a red flag as lateralization, when you have a patient with disturbed conscious level and lateralization as weakness upon one side, unequal pupil, positive plantar response on one side, or any other lateralizing sign, CNS event is usually uh, uh, is usually suspected and you call them the neurologist. Also, when a patient uh, presents with disturbed conscious level and seizure and the patient is unresponsive, he could be in a post-ectal confusion or non-convulsive status epilepticus. Also, when you face a patient with disturbed conscious level and fever and necrogenity, could be a CNS infection. Also, when you have a patient with disturbed conscious level and abnormal eye movement, vernix encephalopathy could be suspected, especially if the patient has history suggestive of that, like chronic alcoholism or patient with malnutrition or any other cause of thiamine deficiency. When you face a patient with trauma and disturbed conscious level, it is usually due to traumatic brain injury, and then you call the neurosurgeon. Initial investigations for a patient with disturbed conscious level in uh, ER usually should include blood sugar, arterial blood gases, basic uh, labs as CBC, liver functions, kidney functions, and electrolytes, toxicology screen in some cases when the history is suggestive. Also, CT brain is a must. Sometimes we do lumbar puncture and the EEG, not in all cases, but we usually, when facing a patient with disturbed conscious level in ER, we usually trying to find a treatable cause. Example of some treatable causes of disturbed conscious level that is important and we have to focus on nutritional encephalopathy. That's caused by, uh, that's called vernix encephalopathy, caused by vitamin deficiency, uh, vitamin B1 deficiency, uh, which is thiamine. Uh, could be due to hyperemesis gravidarum, uh, when they call you in gynecology, we have a patient with disturbed conscious level, you go there and you putting in your mind vernix encephalopathy usual. Patients also with chronic alcoholism, and patients with malnutrition. Patient usually presents with encephalopathy, ocular motor dysfunction, and gait disturbance or ataxia. When you do imaging as MRI, you find these bilateral hyperintense lesion that is found in the brain stem and thalamus. Most common causes of metabolic encephalopathies include liver cell failure, hepatic encephalopathy, renal failure, uremic encephalopathy, and hypothyroidism, that's myxedema coma, or any electrolyte imbalances, hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, also that could present with disturbed conscious level. You usually find in the patient that uh, signs that denote metabolic encephalopathy, you usually find the patient in agitated state, we call that agitated delirium. The patient could have some tremors, characteristic are asterixis, which we call negative myoclonus, when you have the patient all over tremor, tremulous and he has tremors in the upper limbs where he cannot maintain tone, that's called negative myoclonus. 
Also, the patient could have no signs of infection or mild, just mild fever that could not explain the disturbed conscious level. And the most important sign that the patient usually has no lateralizing signs. For diagnosis, the clinical scenario is suggestive history and examination. Usually, we use supportive laboratory findings that could uh, prove cirrhotic liver or shrunken kidney or electrolyte imbalance. Management is usually directed upon treatment of the cause. In CNS infection, you usually find a very severely ill patient. It is, un it is common. It is common state, but uncommon that you find the patient is well. You, you, we, we usually find the triad of fever, seizure, and meningeal irritation sign part with disturbed conscious living. And when you see a patient which is con communicating, it is uncommon to be seeing this infection. A patient with seeing this infection is usually severely ill. Lumbar puncture is the corner storm for diagnosis, and we manage according to the organism, either bacterial or viral or TB or other organisms. General measurements for management of a patient with disturbed conscious level usually should include secure airway, breathing, and circulation, investigate for a treatable cause, and avoid complication of bedridden. That's very important. By anticoagulation, prophylactic one, hydration, and gastric protection. Usually, we have to properly manage the cause, and in some centers, CNS stimulants are used as piracetam and cetylcholine and amantadine, but there is no evidence or supporting evidence for their use. Their use is usually limited to certain uh, situations. That is not that common. Any questions? Hope we could uh, clarify that uh, important topic, and thank you for listening. Bismillah